Again, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to use stacks in Xcode, but again, this reading is very good. Um, if you read this part, auto layout without constraints, this is where they talk about stacks. The stack view also bases its layout on the arranged views, content, hugging, and compressing resistance priority priorities. You can modify these using the size inspector. Now, one of the things about when you're using, one of the most confusing parts of using stacks is that it will squish the box down to the size of the content, which really makes it confusing. For example, if I wanted to have, let's say I wanted to have a, um, a button, another button, and another button, or three buttons across my screen, and I wanted it to be nice and even and spaced here. The problem that you're going to run into is if you squeeze these into a stack, what will happen is it will squish everything down and you end up looking like this. And you won't even see that there's a box for the stack. So if you put four buttons or three buttons on the screen and then you tell it to be in a stack or a box or a group, whatever you want to call it, it'll then squish it all down into there. And you get frustrated, like, damn, it's all squished down. Visually, because your brain is looking at it visually like that. But in concept, what you could do is you could tell it to be over here, and then over here, as far as zero, zero on the edges of the stack, and it will then spread it out like this. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when you start building things using stacks, the biggest frustration is it starts squishing and combining things together. And in order to get it spread out, it, it's a little bit, bit tricky is what I'm trying to say. So let's try. Again, resort to using constraints only when you cannot achieve your goals with stacks view alone. So that's why I was saying I'm not going to be using the pinning thing until the very kind of end when I put the pins on the main box. So I'm just going to start putting things in boxes. Then we'll have a main box, and then we pin. That's what he means by constraints. When you, when you use the word constraints, think of the pin option, right? So, um, whatever, whatever, no, no, no. so um, let's, let's just demonstrate. So if I go to my Xcode, hopefully I have uh, some stuff left over from last class. Um, I don't know, did this one work? Something's loading. Whoosh! Oh, I have stacks view. Did I put this all together already? Oh, well, let me let me remove this stuff, and let me start over. All right, it's not letting me click on anything. Okay, let me start from scratch. So um, I have a layout. Let me get rid of this horrible green, horrible green. Where? Come on, there we go. Horrible green. Where's that? How do I change the horrible green? Horrible green. View. Attribute. Let's make it. A nice light color. There we go. Or we can do purple for, for prints. Let's do purple for prints. We're going to do purple for prints. Let's do purple for purple rain. Anybody sick of listening to purple rain yet? Okay. So I have a blank uh, view. I'm going to kind of put together um, the things that we did last time. I should have all that stuff already inside here, right? Under assets. I have a... a, I have a 
sorry. So I have an image, I have a logo, there we go. I have an image, I have a logo, I have a play button, I have a title. Of course we have our animation and we have a stop button and then some labels, right? So let's get started. I'm going to talk again today about putting it together using stacks. I, it took me a while to figure all that out, but hopefully we can make a better layout. Um, again, the top options I'm going to use images. So the top one is going to be an image. So don't worry about anything quite yet. I'm just going to put an image in there and that is going to be my um, logo thing, right? Again, we're using the same that guy. And then the next one I'm going to use is going to be my Raskoff And that's going to be my title. And of course, aspect fill. Try using aspect fill. Okay. So here's where things will start going crazy on you. If I select both things right here, I want to put them in a stack that goes vertically across the screen. So I can come down here to the, the top right here and hit stacks, and you'll notice everything gets big. Why did it get big? What has happened? Well, whenever you're using the stack option, what it does is it takes all the constraints or all the sizes that you use when we put this on there and goes back to the default size. Okay, so the default size of, and let me back up, let's, let's undo so we can see what I just said. Okay, again, when I put these images on the screen, these are not the size of the image, okay? They're the size of the box. When I took the image box and I put it on the screen, right? I went and put an image in that box. It shrunk the original image down to fit in that box. But soon as you go and select it, like I just did, and tell it to be within a stack, what it's going to do is it's going to take that image that's in that box and make it the size of the original file which is big which is bigger than it looks right here so that's one confusing thing if I click right here and say okay I want to put them in a horizontal stack boom it made them big did you see that okay so that's a problem that you're gonna have to deal with that I, I haven't found a solution to that yet but I'm just explaining why it exploded on you it exploded because it takes the again the image the original image and puts it the size of the original image whatever that so this would be the size I made it in Photoshop, basically, right? And that, that, that little guy with the headphones, that's the size it is in Photoshop. That's why I exploded. Let's not worry about that yet. Okay, We're going to continue, but I'm just pointing out why it exploded. Next, I'm going to put another image underneath there. Again, this is going to be my... Um, this is going to be my um, music thing. There it is, that thing. And then, of course, we have some labels label 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 let's put that on there and um, a b c now if you if you looked at the um, oh let me put one more label on there and, and whenever I'm using text if you want things to be aligned to the left um, there's an option right here for aligning to the left and I'm gonna duplicate this and um, put the name of the album I think that's it Lexan Club oh there it is it's right there it's I-C-O-N oops jeez okay so again these are lined left because I have actually aligned them to the left here. Now, one of the things they talk about inside of, of the, um, in chapter 32, the chapter that is on stacks, is they talk about using fonts by, um, by kind of like HTML, right? When we use HTML, we have our H1, H2, you know, for heading one, heading two. Then we have um, 
a P tag for a paragraph tag, right? These are ways that you can format your text, right? Well, you also have ways of formatting here in Xcode. If I click on the ABC here, I can come over here where it says font default system. See where it says default system 17. And if you click on there, you can go down to where it says style and you'll notice, oh, not style, system here, system. You'll notice that you have body, call out, caption one, caption two, footnote, headline, subhead, title one, title two, title three. These are kind of like default sizes for your text and um, if you do headline you'll notice it gets kind of bolder um, it doesn't change the size too much but it gets bolder and um, so I just wanted to point that out there is actual different options for fonts and we can call this one body and so this one's a headline this is a body so I'm going to group these together, these two right here. This time they'll be in a vertical stack, which is, again, I'm going to click here. It kind of recognizes and puts vertical in there. See how it's put vertical in there? Again, this one, it put horizontal in there because I had two things next to each other. So, and then I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to put them together into, again, the stack view, and it's going to most likely put them in horizontal here. Notice how it changed the size of the, this to the normal size. Now, if you want this ABC Lexan of Love to be in the middle of, of this, you can actually go to where it says alignment here, and you can say center, and it'll move it down. So you can adjust things within this box. Okay, So these two things are next to each other, basically, in this box. So again, um, these two, the two letters here are in one stack that's a vertical stack. In fact, I'm going to start naming my stacks right here. This, this top one is going to be called, if you can click on it, I'm going to call it banner. Okay, that banner is these two options up here are in a horizontal stack. Okay, the next one down is this is going to be, um, this is the labels. If I can, this is the labels. Labels. And then this one is going to be, um, how about we call it, come on. I can't. You got to hit it just right. And this is going to be my middle. How about we call it middle content? So we have a middle content and a banner. The banner is the stuff at the top. Middle content is here. And then labels is here. Okay, let's, let's put another um, image on the screen. And that'll be for my animation. That, and so I'm, I'm not going to do the animation today. I'm just going to put in one of the graphics. There we go. Now this is not in a stack quite yet. But we are going to put it in a stack with the slider. Now if I put a slider on there, Remember the slider? Oops. Slider for the volume. I can drag it between them. Notice though how it is underneath here. You can actually move things around. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Inside of this window over here. Oh, I didn't want that, did I? Is it? No? You kind of jammed it up there. I wanted it, oh, because it thought I wanted to put it in there. I want to put it in top of that, but not inside there, over here. Let me drag it down. There we go. So I'm going to drag the, again, they're not in a stack quite yet. You can actually select things over here as well as in the main screen to select things. And I'm going to go and select those and tell them to be in a stack. There we go. So now I have the slider the animation um, in a stack. Okay, so let's start and take everything and put it in one big box. Okay, again, I have several smaller boxes here. I got one box here. I got one main box here for the middle content and one box at the top for the banner. So.
So next thing I want to do is, is I'm going to make one big box to put them all in. Now, another way to put the, the stack onto the screen is instead of clicking on this option, after you select things and click on this option, what you can do is you can drag a stack in. Okay, I can type in stack down here. And um, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to put a vertical stack in. I want a vertical stack. What I want, or a horizontal one. Let me think about this for a moment. Actually, no, don't do that. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to select all of them here. And then I'm going to go and hit the stack view. And it should put them all in one big one. So, and we're going to call this, if I can change the name here, top level snap, top level stack. So again, this is one big one. So I selected all the stacks that were here and I put them all into, I put all the other pieces together. So again, think of these. This is a group of two content. This is a group of the middle stuff. And this is the group of the, um, the slider and the animation all together. And then I put them all in one big box called the top level stack. Now, hopefully this is going to work. I don't know if it's going to work or not. But what I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and tell this top level stack, the main one, that I want to have, again, just like I wrote on the board, 0, 0, 0, 0, so it will fit everything inside. We're going to cross our fingers and try it. So again, I'm going to have this selected, this top level stack, which is kind of the main box, the main box. I'm going to go to now to the pinning, to the constraints. Oh, let me change the, the letting inside here. Let me, let me just change this for a moment. I want to change this to center. Let me, let me try this. It's letting center. There we go. Center all the content. See it right here? And then distribution, I'm going to say equally fill equally. It looks like it went crazy. It does, but don't worry. What I just did, again, the main box, the main box, I told the main box to center all the content and then fill it equally. It's okay. I know it looked like it went crazy on you, but what it did was it told it to kind of fill whatever the size of the box is. So what, what that's going to do is is kind of allow it hopefully to adjust okay next um, again I'm gonna go to the pinning option here and I'm gonna put a zero in for the top zero tab zero zero tab zero zero ah, zero 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 there we go so I went zero 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 and then I'm gonna say um, update frames items of uh, all frames let me see what, what did the book call it here they did it in the book I was following again the um, be sure to change the update frames or not that one, no, um, center, fill equally. Mm. All frames in container, right here. Update frames, all frames in container. And then hit add constraint. And it shrunk it down. It shrunk, remember how big it was going off the edge of the page? Remember how the things were going off the edge of the page? What I just did is, again, I will, let me undo and I'll do it again. 
what you're doing is you're telling the boxes to change size to fit within the main box and the main box. Here, I'll, I'll draw it on the board. This is, this is the key to making it work, okay? The key to making it work is to take the main box, right, the big box with all the other boxes inside, tell the main box to have zero, 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 right, in the contain option. And then the, the bottom option, before you hit add constraints, there's an option at the bottom that says update the frames inside. What that'll do is tell these boxes that are inside there to shrink down to fit within the main box. So you're making the main box the size of the screen, like, like the iPhone, iPad, right? It's going to shrink it down. And then you tell all the boxes inside to scale down to fit within that box. Let me do it one more time because like, I was thinking as I was doing it. Let me do it one more time. Let me undo. Let me undo. Okay, again, see how they're all kind of, it's bigger than the size of the window, right? Again, grab the main box, which is this one, the main box, the top level with all the boxes in there. Go to the pinning option right here. Again, I'm going to put 0, 0, 0 all the way around. 0, 0, 0, tab, 0, tab, 0, tab, 0, tab. Okay, tab works better than clicking with the mouse if you were in there. But the key is down here where it says update frames. Do you see where it says update frames down here? You want to use all frames within the container. Okay, that'll then all frames within the container here and then hit add for constraints and it'll shrink them, the things that are inside down to. Now if I, there might be some constraints. Now the book says, and this is again from chapter 32 in the book, the book said there might be some, still might be some issues with things, and their recommendation is this, is to go to the option here where the update frames is, right here, and they say add missing constraints, because there might be some constraints, there might be some things that are not quite correct yet, I don't know, I didn't understand it myself too much, but the idea is that this option says add missing constraints will f kind of fix the things that are missing. If that makes any sense, I don't know. And, and so that, again, is on the book. It says add missing constraints. Then it says click on that one more time and make sure you say update frames. I don't know if it did anything or not. I didn't see any adjustment. But that was kind of like if there's anything that's not resolved, this will resolve any extra layout issues then in theory we should be able to hit the play button here or the um, preview button and it should hopefully if we can preview here it should all fit in the window now is what I'm trying to say I hope we'll cross our fingers Maybe. Only time will tell. Maybe. So, I naturally what's, what's happening is that it's going to want to change the size of the graphics to try and scale them when it goes down to a smaller screen, right? or when it rotates it needs to maybe adjust the size and that's where the squishy would come from that's where you saw my logo get kinda squished right so in theory it needs to scale all the content together and not just one of the things inside right so this needs to scale down 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 or whatever it needs to adjust the size of the images and that's where sometimes squishy comes from I think the squishy was coming from and that's why I'm getting an error message here is that uh, oh and one thing we didn't do that was right remember what we didn't do was do the um, fix this part so let, let's let me go and do that maybe that'll fix it 
do you remember when I went to here and I said um, up um, um, add missing constraints? Do you remember that? That's what I failed to do one time too. That was that was here view where was it? Now it's not letting me. Add missing constraints. And then I did update frames. Remember that's what I did with this one? My other example? Oh. That was this one, right? This one? Yeah, this one was better. And I went and I added... Let me see if I can get this one to run again. I don't know. What was wrong with this one? Oh no, this is this is this is the one I was doing. What was the difference between these? Oh, this is the one. Oh, my! It's let me test this again. Okay. It's fitting, and there it goes. It squished this down where this needs to scale. The objects all need to scale together as a team. Um, oh, let me think about that for a moment. Oh, and that was on the iPhone 5. Or no, this is the wrong one. See, I, this one's confusing me. I'm going to quit this one. Go away. Okay, this is it. Let me try this on iPhone 5. I want to see if it works on iPhone 5. Okay. It seems to fit on iPhone 5. Look how it, it had to scale this. Do you see how it scaled this? Can you rotate it? What's that? Rotate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see how it's squishing this? and it's scaling this. So this is the iPhone 5. This is what it would look like. So yeah, you need to go through and, and, and it needs to scale in proportion. So yeah, there's still problems, but at least it fits in the window. We made some progress, right? Okay. So how to get it to scale in proportion, I have to think about that for a moment. Um, just let me look real quick. I'll have to look. Let me pause this for a moment.